Ever since Nintendo captured the hearts and minds of millions with the Legend of Zelda series, a lot of game developers have chased that success with their own inspired iterations of the classic fantasy series. Much of that has to do with those kids who have grown up to be game developers, which is really fun. Ari and the Secret of the Season is a throwback love letter to games like Zelda because it incorporates many thematic elements the Nintendo series would end up popularizing in other games. Ari uses the power of the seasons to bring peace to her land, engaging in thoughtful puzzles and battling crazed hyenas intent on stopping her. I went in expecting a warm blanket of cozy nostalgia, but what I got was a sopping wet cardboard box someone left out in an alley. Ari and the Secret of Seasons is crippled by a deluge of shortcomings that made it near unbearable to play. Ariel, aka Ari, is a spunky little girl who dreams of high adventure. Unfortunately, her gender doesn't offer much in the way of opportunities to see the world. Her brother Flynn, on the other hand, was trained to take on the mantle of Guardian of Winter. In this fantasy setting, the four major regions of the land are locked in perpetual seasons of winter, summer, autumn, and spring. Ari's home of Yule, for example, is the very picture of a year-round winter wonderland. The Guardians of Season ensure that the balance of weather is kept in check, though their prominence has faded with time. Things go pretty well for Ari until her brother goes missing and presumed dead by many, which halts succession rights and leaves Yule without a guardian. To make matters worse, the antics of a certain prince causes havoc as the Guardians of Season are attacked, causing each region's seasons to be reversed. Armed with a strong will and courage, Ari picks up her brother's sword and sets out to make things right and perhaps become a new legendary warrior in the process. Playing Ari in the Secret of Seasons brings to mind the many hours I spent playing new 3D platformers on the PlayStation 2, like Jack and Daxter and Ratchet and Clank. There's a discernible old school look and feel that makes Ari's release on the PlayStation 4 seem like another in a long line of old games finding a new audience on modern consoles. The gameplay is pretty straightforward as Ari travels across each realm and navigates immense temples to put the seasons back in the right order. Along the way, she'll have the option to help people and explore hard to reach locations and secrets after securing special gear that makes difficult areas accessible. Exploring Ari's world isn't very exciting because there's a lot of unused real estate as each area you visit is surprisingly huge. There are a few collectibles to hunt down and those that exist offer little in terms of scrutable rewards for the effort. Both Jack and Daxter and Ratchet and Clank had things you could gather and use to purchase items, earn extra lives, and whatnot. For Ari, she'll find treasure chests filled with a varying amount of gold that has to be determined through some RNG system because the amount seems so wildly different. It would also explain why I opened a chest and was enthusiastically told that there were zero coins inside. These coins can be spent on cosmetic items and to beef up Ari's abilities in combat, which are much more worthy of your coins instead of hats and clothes. The meat of Ari and the Secret of Seasons lies in its elemental-themed guardian temples. They house numerous puzzles that are powered by clever mechanisms that can either be manipulated by hand or by Ari's season spheres. The mechanics of the season spheres is the game's greatest strength and helps separate it from other platformers of this type. Once Ari's proper adventure begins, she can use a special amulet mapped to the directional pad that creates a bubble of weather. There's a lot of fun detail packed into these weather bubbles, by the way. If you create a spring sphere in an autumn area, the grass inside is replaced with flower beds. And if you're standing on a body of water and trigger a winter sphere, that water turns to ice that can support her weight. Although the spheres Ari creates on her own are rather small, using them in tandem with artifacts can greatly expand their range. The initial set of temples are easy enough to navigate, though they tend to suffer from serious pathfinding concerns, but later parts of the game make considerable demands of your capacity to manage multiple spheres at once. Ancient mechanisms aren't the only thing that stands in the way of Ari's mission. She'll regularly encounter tribes of anthropomorphized hyenas who regularly menace the human villagers. Typically found in groups, hyenas will assault Ari on sight with their homemade weapons. Combat is a forgettable affair because enemies really don't matter. It's rare that you'll be forced to do battle in order to trigger some door or other device, and because the monsters don't give much chase, you can easily sidestep them. Furthermore, dead hyenas drop no loot, experience, or coins. I avoided combat whenever I could because bad enemy AI and lack of incentive made the whole affair feel pointless. When I did fight the enemy, it was mostly out of boredom or a boss battle. 
Hyenas can be taken out simply by hacking them with your sword until their life meters drain, performing the occasional parry to trigger a stunlock attack. I did like how enemies are affected by Ari Season Spheres, which add and remove armor and even turn them into solid objects that can be used to solve puzzles. The game's only meaningful use of combat and weaponized Season Spheres are found in the handful of boss battles that involve finding out what will stun them, leaving their weak spots exposed. With the exception of the temples, I couldn't find fun in Ari and the Secret of the Seasons. A lot of that has to do with the game I played looking and playing like a half-finished product, or at least a second draft. All of the pieces for a cool game are here and in place. There just needs to be a stronger cohesion amongst gameplay elements and visual appeal. And the bugs. Oh my goodness, the bugs. Ari has more bugs than a bait store, some of which are game-breaking and far too easily to reproduce in the heat of the moment. During about 8 hours of play, I watched in frustration as Ari fell through solid objects, failed double jumps, climbing animations that triggered at impossible positions, disappearing enemy parry indicators, attacks that didn't connect, and even a full game crash. The game-breaking bug I mentioned happened with an early boss that involves pulling a long lever to make him vulnerable. If Ari dies with the lever pulled all the way, you'll be reloaded back into the fight with the boss seemingly still accessible, only your progress is halted by invisible hazards. And the only way to fix it is to reload an earlier save. No lie, this happened to me about four times. FOUR! I encountered another boss glitch towards the end of the game too. The fight started with the boss's health meter already down to its final quarter and would not perform the moves I needed to stun it long enough for me to attack. And on top of all that, there's an overabundance of visual problems that hurts the pretty and whimsical nature of the game's setting. Entire buildings pop into existence once the character has reached a specific draw distance, and much like the PlayStation 1 games of the past, there's this light layer of fog that looks like it was meant to hide pop in, but does a terrible job at it. Whole assets, including puzzle elements, can disappear if you turn the camera in a particular way. Speaking of the camera, I really hated how its rest state was programmed to stay as far back behind Ari as it can get. This becomes a problem in tighter quarters because it zooms in far too close and obscures the action as it gets stuck behind a wall or a prop. It's incredibly hard to find fun in a game like this where there are so many elements working against you. And it sucks because there's something here that's really good and fun. What I'd like to see here is a publisher with lots of money and developer talent assist the original team to really make this game the best it can be. As I was putting this video review together, I noticed that Ari and the Secret of the Seasons got a patch update. That's great. I hope people have a much better experience than I had. However, for the purposes of this review, it's extraordinarily disappointing to see all of its problems. I had high hopes for this game. Lord knows the PlayStation could use more Zelda-style adventures. The combination of an energetic heroine exploring a vibrant world showed enough promise to make me eager for its debut. It's both sad and frustrating to see the final product because I know it could be so much better. Travel is tedious, with environments so large as if to inspire awe, but are a real slog to cross. Half-baked ideas, poor performance, and low reliability prevent it from reaching any heights, and unless there's some serious patchwork to be done, I can easily see this game being forgotten by the end of the year, if not sooner. Ari and the Secret of Seasons has its heart in the right place and displays flashes of greatness, but nothing short of a major overhaul can fix its numerous and significant flaws. Darkstation gives Ari and the Secret of Seasons two and a half stars.